This is a 2019 Mercedes-Benz Sprinter, and it's ready to go anywhere and do anything. These Sprinter vans have become incredibly popular for camping and traveling and living off the grid, but I've never really reviewed a cooled Sprinter RV conversion. Today I'm going to change that and I'm going to show you all the quirks and features of this awesome Sprinter. Before I get started, big news, this Sprinter is currently for sale, being auctioned live on cars and bids. This is a 2019 model with four-wheel drive, diesel power, and under 10,000 miles. And it has a full RV sleeping, hanging out setup in the back, which I will show you. And you can buy it on cars and bids. So once you finish watching this video, click the link in the description below to head over to the live live auction for this Sprinter where you can bid on it and buy it only on cars and bids. All right, time for the quirks and features of this Sprinter RV conversion. And there are quite a few of those, mostly in back. But before I get back there, I'm going to start with the basics. So this is a 2019 Sprinter, like I mentioned, only four years old, and it has four-wheel drive and a diesel six-cylinder engine. And that's a great combo, the diesel and four-wheel drive. It's kind of the one that everybody wants. This van also has under 10,000 miles, which is uncommon, as a lot of these were driven out into the wilderness and on long road trips, and so you see a lot of these that have been heavily miled up, but not this one. It's remained pretty much unused and relatively low mileage. Now, this Sprinter is a short wheelbase model. It's a 144 inch wheelbase. That's the distance between the center of the wheels, the front and rear wheels, 144 inches, and it's a high roof short wheelbase model. And that's kind of become the most popular configuration, especially for these RV off-road models, because there's a long wheelbase version offered with a 170 inch wheelbase and you can even get an extended version of that long wheelbase model to really maximize your interior space but if you do that it starts to become a little unwieldy certainly around town on roads and definitely off-road if you ever wanted to take it on a trail those models can be up to 300 inches long which is massive this is around 230 still really big but obviously a lot less car to contend with and of course, the benefit of the high roof version is it's shorter in length, but taller in height. So you maximize your interior and you can stand up in the back in the RV part. So speaking of the back of the Sprinter, let's get on to the interesting quirks and features back here. Starting with you open up the giant sliding door and you see a kitchen. Indeed, there is basically a kitchen in this van. Over on the left, you have a refrigerator. As you can see, you open that, it's a refrigerator. And in the corner, you have a tiny little freezer called a mini freezer. Not huge, but it's there and it helps. Now, around the refrigerator, you have some cabinets that add some storage space to your kitchen for silverware or plates or whatever you might need. And you can see in this upper cabinet, you even have a little cooktop. And you can plug that in right over here. There's a little plug next to the kitchen, and then you can cook stuff on it, which is fantastic. And it has a little place for it to go when it's not in use. Now, also in this area, you have well, a sink, as you can see, just like you might have at home. Here it is in your van. So you can help prepare food, do dishes, whatever you might need a sink for. And speaking of just like at home, you can also see here the countertop, very high quality wood. This is bamboo. You have bamboo counters in your car. <laughs> not something you'd normally expect, but in terms of quality materials in here it's actually a pretty nice build you also have this tweed material all over the walls nice flooring it feels luxurious in this van it feels relatively upscale with some good materials chosen and also just like a lot of sinks in people's houses you have a window directly behind this sink so that you can look out as you're doing dishes on whatever it is you're next to today in your mobile home this window even slides open and it has a screen to prevent bugs from 
from getting inside so you can open it up for a little breeze if that's what you want. Kind of nice. Now, the windows in this interior do make it feel light and open and airy, but even without them, it would feel pretty light in here because, well, there's a lot of lights. So you can turn them on on this panel here. These little dials are dimmer switches for the lights, and you can see the van off, no lights in here, but you can twist the dimmers, turn on the lights, and really kind of brighten up this interior. Now, also on this panel, a few other important items. This button here starts the water pump. So you press that and water starts getting pumped to the sink, and to the shower, which I will cover shortly. Also on this panel, this control here is for the heater. You can turn it on, set a temperature, and then it will heat the cabin until it gets to that temperature. Now the heater is located here under the passenger seat. That's where the air comes out to start to warm the cabin. And it works not with electricity, but rather with diesel fuel. A little bit of diesel is brought from the fuel tank into the heating system in order to run it. And so that way you don't have to run the heater off electrical power. Power, which is nice. Now, speaking of power in this van, this little screen in the panel that I was showing you gives you an idea of where power is coming from at any given moment. There are three basic ways to power this van. Number one, you can plug it in. So you go to an RV park, you have a plug, a hookup for power, and you can do that if you want. You also have a battery system in this van. So you can charge it up and then the batteries will slowly discharge as you use them, turn on the lights, use the refrigerator, etc over time. Now this van also has solar panels mounted on the roof which obviously take the sun's energy and turn into power for the van. It's the least efficient method of powering the van but it does provide a little extra power in case your battery is going dead or you can't find a power hookup. You got your panels for a little power. Now also mounted on this panel, you will see there are two switches here and these will heat your water tanks in your van to make sure they don't freeze if it's really, really cold. This van has essentially two water tanks, a 22 gallon fresh water tank you can use for the sink, for the shower, etc., and an 11 gallon gray water tank. That's what water is called when it comes out of the sink and it's potentially dirty, it goes into a gray water tank. And in cases where you've taken this van somewhere really cold and those tanks might freeze freeze and cause a problem, you turn on the heaters here and that keeps them warm enough that they won't freeze. All of the tanks and the lines have been winterized so they can operate if you can just keep them warm enough so the pipes don't freeze in your van. Now also worth pointing out there is one other water tank. You have a four gallon heated tank of water in this van. It's heated by using a line that comes out of the van's coolant and sort of goes through a tank where coils wrap around it and heat it up and that heats the water in inside the tank. Four gallons and it's kind of always being replenished as you use hot water from the fresh water tank. So you kind of perpetually have hot water in the van until you run out of water in the 22 gallon fresh water tank. And yes, that means you can take hot showers in your van. The shower nozzle is here under this panel. You lift this up and pull it out. You can see that's where you shower from and you can get warm water. People say camping involves roughing it in the wilderness, but here you got bamboo countertops and a hot shower. How bad can it be? Now back here, you can also see benches and indeed they are there. I'll get to them in a second, but first I wanna talk about the bed. This is where the bed is mounted and you can unfold it. There's another panel that comes out, attaches as you can see. So you have two metal panels and then you can put the actual bed surface down and you have a full bed. This is memory foam, a memory foam mattress in your van. And when it's down, you have pretty decent space where you can lie down and sleep. The builder of the van told me someone who's a little over six feet tall can be comfortable here for lying down and sleeping in your van. And you even have the these little lights. You can see right here mounted sort of at the top of the bed. These are little reading lights that you can turn on and well, read. It's kind of a nice thing to simulate what you would have on a bedside table at home. And mounted in the base of these reading lights, you have little USB ports so you can charge your devices even as you sleep, just like you would at home. Now, as we're looking at sort of the top near the ceiling of the van, you can see over on the other side from those reading lights, you have some cabinets in here. And indeed, storage was a major theme of this van. The builder told me they did everything they could to try to get tanks and auxiliary stuff and whatever 
out of the van in order to maximize space inside for storage and for items you might want when you're on the road. So you can see those storage cabinets along the top where you have a lot of space to put stuff. The real exception to all of this is down in this storage compartment here where you can see a lot of electrical stuff that powers the van. But basically every other compartment is empty allowing you to stick stuff in it and be used for storage so you can maximize what you put in the van. And by the way, speaking of convenience, worth pointing out that this van has three different pairs of electrical outlets like this. So six different outlets that you can plug stuff into in addition to those USB ports on the reading lights that I showed you earlier, which is obviously nice to have. But in this vicinity back here, also important to point out these benches. These are inward facing benches and you can access them by removing the bed, which isn't really all that hard to do. You kind of lift the mattress out of place and then you lift the panels out of place which is a little unwieldy but you can do it fairly easily and then you have your benches and if you're gonna want to remove the bed you could of course store it on the outside of the van or you can just put it up front in the driver's seat area because if you're using the benches you're probably not gonna be driving in the van but anyway with the benches exposed you can see there's this contraption along the bottom on the floor of the van this is for a table it's sort of a receiver for a table you have another component of it right here this is the central post that you install in place and then from there you stick the tabletop on and then you have a table. Now the cool thing about the tracks along the bottom of the van is that you can theoretically slide the table forward or backwards depending on where you want it to maximize your convenience and your enjoyment. So you're sitting on the benches, you're using the table, eating, playing games, hanging out, whatever you want to do. Now when the table goes away there's a space for it. You can see directly behind the driver's seat next to the sink that's your table storage spot. And it's also worth pointing out in terms of seating in this van that the passenger seat up front can swivel all the way around. You can flip it around so it's swiveling and facing the rear area and that gives you an extra seat for someone to sit in and kind of join in on whatever fun is happening in back. Now, it's worth pointing out that even though this van has a heating system, which I showed you earlier, it doesn't have an air conditioning system specifically for the rear. Of course, it does have an air conditioner like most vehicles do up front, and the air comes out the vents in the dashboard, but there is no specific rear air conditioner unit in this van. With that said, you can open all the windows. I showed you that one next to the sink. You can open the others as well. They slide open, they have screens for bugs, which is obviously very useful, and then you can get a a little breeze going in the van. On the ceiling you also have a fan mounted up there so you can add even more kind of cool air passing when you turn on the fan and you can also use that fan to send air the other direction. So if you want to switch the fan blades going the opposite way you can do that with the fan as well providing a little climate control for people in back. And speaking of the roof in this Sprinter van, this ladder gets you there. You want to climb up to the roof, you just get on the ladder and climb right up and then you can access a rather large roof rack which also contains the solar panels but you can also throw stuff on it if all of the things you have don't quite fit in the van. Now also worth pointing out on the outside of this van a couple other interesting things for one the tires like I said this is a four-wheel drive van and so it has BF Goodrich KO2s which is one of the better off-road tires. I have these tires on all of my off-roaders and I love them. You also have these cool wheels it's an aftermarket wheel but they look off-roady and tough which kind of gives this van and a more aggressive image than well you might expect from a van. Worth pointing out also above the front seats on the roof you have a giant LED light bar which could be important if you're taking this van down a trail at night trying to find your campsite you got a big light bar to light everything up so you can see the world. And finally, we move up to the front of this Sprinter van, although frankly, this is the least interesting part of the whole thing. It's just a pretty basic, normal Sprinter van situation up here. You got a little screen in the center, you got your climate control, you got your media, you got all this stuff you'd normally expect, some cup holders up here, just a regular front end of a Sprinter. Obviously, the driving experience is kind of the least important part of this vehicle. What goes on in back is what people are most interested in. With that said, one funny thing about this Sprinter 
is the key. You can see here is the Sprinter key and here is a regular Mercedes-Benz key from my E-Class. And it's kind of funny, the shape, the look is the same, but they've made the Sprinter key crappier. <laughs> they just decontented the key because nobody really cares if their Sprinter van key is nice. So you have the basic Mercedes key, but just a crappier version of it. All right, driving the Sprinter van. <laughs> I have done reviews on Sprinters before, I think only one, but it was like a luxury limo version. And I think the cool, the coolest versions of these are now these RV conversions, four wheel drive. And it's like a Jeep that you can camp in. I mean, it's not as capable as a Jeep, but you get the idea. So one of the first things that people bring up when they talk about these vehicles is their size. Um, they are big. I mean, there's no question about that. The, the benefit of going with the shorter wheelbase, even though you get less room inside, but the benefit of doing that is you uh, have a more manageably sized vehicle, like I mentioned before. Now, it's still long, to be clear. 230 whatever inches is, is the same size as a full-size pickup truck. That's a big vehicle, but, you know, the world is, in the United States anyway, is made for full-size pickup trucks. Like, they, if you can get one there, you can get this thing in. The problem, I think, is that a lot of the people who buy these, who spend six figures on a Sprinter van to go camping, um, they don't necessarily have experience driving big vehicles, like commercial trucks and pick full-size trucks, and so I think they are largely intimidated by it. But it's not that intimidating of a vehicle once you get used to it. And of course, you have big mirrors, you have an enormous amount of visibility here in the front, you have a backup camera, and here in the front, you're sitting pretty close to the very front of the car, the very front corners. And so you can pretty much see exactly where it stops kind of at all the edges, which is obviously nice, and that helps you with maneuverability as well. But, you know, I don't want to downplay, it certainly is a large vehicle. That's the thing about the Sprinter. It's big, it's bulky, but it's a reasonably doable thing and you do get used to it. Uh, and it's not just totally oversized, massive, like you're driving a cement mixer. Okay, so let's talk about performance. As you can imagine, there isn't much. Performance is not necessarily a goal in this vehicle, but you do have a good sized diesel powertrain that provides you know, good torque, which is big for a car like this. Something that's a larger vehicle, you want torque, you want that feel of being able to move this hefty vehicle, and that's exactly what you get. This feels torquey, uh, and it's a smooth powertrain that delivers power smoothly. Um, not, you know, not any excessive noise, not any kind of weird power band. It gives you the power you'd want to be able to control this in sort of an expectable manner. Now, one thing worth noting, you do have uh, a great seating position in these Sprinter vans, even though they are technically vans. You know, from a, from a seating perspective, they feel like trucks. They're really high up. You can see out over the world. Uh, and they really do have a commanding seating position and a commanding view. Now, interestingly, driving this van, I mean, obviously it's slow and bulky and kind of lumbering, but it's not particularly difficult to drive, I would say, especially on a, in a freeway setting. I'm going about 60 right now, and, and it's, it's a pretty drivable vehicle. You're never going to be the car passing people in the left lane. Um, but it's a useful, totally acceptable car um, when you're on the freeway. You can certainly keep up with traffic, and as long as you plan stuff out ahead, you're fine. Now, also worth noting is it's surprisingly smooth in here, which um, which I wasn't really expecting. You don't have a lot of like banging and rattling and stuff from the back. There is some stuff moving around. I mean, you are carrying like a tiny house back there, but it's not excessive. It's not so much that it's like radically distracting as you drive along. It's totally fine. Truthfully, this van is cool and the driving experience is kind of the, the least interesting part about it. At the end of the day, the thing that people are most paying attention to with these vans is the stuff they have. You know, what can you, what can you get out of it? Can you sleep in it? Can you shower in it? All that stuff. And the drive is almost like secondary. It's like, all right, I, I gotta make it to my destination. How bad is it gonna be from a size perspective and all that? But I really think that that stuff is manageable and it's a reasonable trade-off to make as opposed to a giant RV or a big travel trailer behind you. You got it all self-contained in here. It's big, but it's not terrible and you do get used to it. And you know, with this one, four-wheel drive, you can kind of go off-road and that's a pretty cool benefit too. And so that's this 2019 Mercedes-Benz Sprinter luxury off-road RV conversion. It's nice to finally spend time in a cool RV converted Sprinter, and you can buy this one on cars and bids. Anyway, now it's time to give this Sprinter a Doug score.
And the Doug score is here, 55 out of 100, which places the Sprinter here against some other vans, although none of these vans are really rivals to this Sprinter in the slightest. That's because I don't often review vehicles like this, but I'm glad I did review this Sprinter. It's tremendously cool, an off-roader that's also a mobile hotel room with all the accoutrement you'll want for off-grid living, and the fact that it's the diesel-powered 4x4 version adds to the appeal.